Hello, dear friends. Welcome to this devotional from Tom Wright for Lent, uh, year A. We are in week one, and this is his devotional for Tuesday of week one of Lent in year A. I welcome you and hope that this time will set a good pace for your day. Let's open with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for bringing us here today. Please allow us to get every bit of your word that can come alive within us and lead us with your wisdom. Pour out your wisdom on us, Father, so that we can use what you say to us in the very best way possible. We thank you and give you praise. We ask that you will seal this time in the power of your name. It's in the name of Jesus that we ask these things. Amen. Tuesday, our uh, chapter that we read is Matthew chapter 6, but we are focused on Matthew 6, 5 through 15. And that's what I'll be reading. When you pray, you mustn't be like the play actors. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on street corners so that people will notice them. I'm telling you the truth. They have received their reward in full. No, when you pray, go into your own room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is there in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, don't pile up a jumbled heap of words. That's what the Gentiles do. They reckon that the more they say, the more likely they are to be heard. So don't be like them. You see, your Father knows what you need before you ask. So this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven May your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done as in heaven, so on earth. Give us today the bread we need now and forgive us the things we owe as we too have forgiven what was owed to us. Don't bring us into the great trial but rescue us from evil. Yes, if you forgive people the wrong they have done, your Heavenly Father will forgive you as well. But if you don't forgive people, neither will your Heavenly Father forgive you what you have done wrong. At the very heart of Jesus' oops, sorry, uh, verse 15, but if you don't forgive people, Neither will your heavenly Father forgive you what you have done wrong. And now, may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let's hear some of the thoughts from Tom Wright. At the very heart of Jesus' vision of the kingdom of heaven's coming, I better start again. Some of the uh, language is just a little different. It's that British way of expressing things, and sometimes I trip over it. So let me begin with his thoughts. At the very heart of Jesus's vision of the kingdom, of heaven's kingdom coming on earth, we have a picture of one person secretly in their own room praying. Prayer is a mystery. I've often heard people saying with a sneer, it doesn't go beyond the ceiling, you know. But the point of prayer, at least the way Jesus saw it, is that it doesn't have to. 
Your father, he says, is there in the secret place with you. He sees and knows your deepest thoughts and hopes and fears. He hears the words you say. He hears, too, the things you can't put into words but want to lay before him anyway. Prayer, in fact, isn't a mystery in the sense of a puzzle we can't understand. Prayer is a symptom a sign of the mystery, the fact that heaven and earth actually mingle together. That's the mystery. A symptom, a sign of the mystery, the fact that heaven and earth actually mingle together. There are times when they interlock. There are places where they overlap. To pray in this sense is to claim a time and place. It can be anywhere, anytime, as one of those times, one of those places. If prayer is about heaven and earth overlapping in time and space, it's also about them coming together in matter, in the stuff of this world, the clay from which we are made. To pray, in this sense, is to claim, think about it, and realize just how daring this is, that the living God, enthroned in heaven, can make his home with you, within you. To make this point vividly, Go into your room in secret and pray there. Take God seriously. But when you do so, realize one more thing. If prayer is about heaven and earth coming together at one time, in one place, within the lump of clay we call me, then it's going to change this person called me. In particular, it's going to make me a forgiver. Jesus was quite clear about this. All of us have been hurt, wounded, slighted, annoyed by other people. How much more have we ourselves done that to God? Yet, we want him to be with us, to hear us, and yes, to forgive us. How can we not be forgiven? How can we not be forgivers too? So the great prayer comes together. Utterly simple, utterly profound. A child can learn it. An old wise saint will still be going deeper into it. Heaven is not far away, and it's where we meet the God who, with breathtaking confidence, we can call Father. Familiarity must not imply contempt, a lack of fear or respect. His very nature is holy, and we must honor it as such. And what we most want the strange phenomenon of which prayer itself is a supreme example, is that his kingdom should come and his will be done on earth as in heaven. When we pray, we pray for that goal, but we also pray within that promise. We then place our needs, whether simple or complex, within that framework, bread, for the day ahead, forgiveness of debt, the debts we owe to God, the debts too, and this may surprise some, the debts we owe one another. And then, importantly, rescue. Rescue from the time of testing, of trial, whether that be personal temptation, 
frequently repeated or the tribulation which Jesus, like many others of his day, believed would come upon the world before God's deliverance finally dawned, and rescue, too, from the evil one. Much of Jesus' public career was a battle with the powers of darkness. That isn't surprising, since he was announcing that God was taking back control of the world from those powers. When we pray this prayer, we are caught up in that battle too. But we don't face the danger alone. We claim his victory, his rescue, rather than facing danger alone. His deliverance. The mystery of prayer. This prayer lies at the very center of the Sermon on the Mount. It should be at the center of our life, our own kingdom obedience. Our prayer for today, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to forgive. Make us your people. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, dear friends, for joining me today. I pray the Lord will bless you and keep you until we meet again tomorrow.